Well, hi, Julie. Good morning, Jen, or good afternoon. I good afternoon. Say now. Or That's good morning. Crazy. I know we've got some central time zone people on, so you're True. still in morning. Good morning. True. Good, good Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy Monday. Um, well, I am I'm rather excited to talk about this topic. It's it's I feel like it spins what we know about communication and foundations and how business operate in a different way. Because mm -hmm. we both have a lot of communications training and we have a lot of leadership training and, and content, but this one kind of ties into how business is run and it's a structure and how it can grow. And um, as you know, I'm partnering with a, a global company to create and enhance communication training and deliver it to, I think, almost 400 people. And what's interesting is the reason they're asking for this is that their opportunity, I wouldn't say problem, mm -hmm. is that their last employee survey said there was a lack of trust in leadership. Mm -hmm. They didn't know where their value was as employees, right? The comment is they're unable to understand the vision and strategy and how they play a role into that. And so they're like, we need communications training, but it's not just, you know, how to communicate, it's as a system, right? Mm -hmm. To drive engagement and impact the bottom line. So pretty cool. Um, so I'm very excited to introduce this topic today in our September webinar. So if you don't know who Julie and I are, um, quick spiel about Joint Pivot. We, we both have extension, extensive backgrounds in manufacturing operations, HR supply chain, um, development, strategic planning, but Overall, we love to solve problems. We love to understand root cause. And we, we definitely partner with the businesses that we work with to create solutions that stick. And I would say one of the biggest wins for what we do is we drive engagement, right? We help employees, all of them from executives all the way down to frontline leaders to even hourly employees, help make their job and day better and easier, which drives performance. Um, it helps the bottom line. And our solutions, you know, obviously relate to what you see in our logo on the left-hand side. And <clears throat> how do we do this? Well, we can perform the services. We can help you in areas where you don't have the expertise. We can do training, obviously remote or in person, train the trainer. Um, we want to help level up skills, help people get better, help people understand why their role is so important. So call us, text us, find us. We'll go into that spiel at the end. Um, <clears throat> But so today we're gonna to talk about communication um, and we're gonna to, create some awareness around communication as a system. We'll talk about mixed messages just for a bit. And then you've got some suggested homework at the end of today's class, not class, 30 minute <laughs> webinar. <clears throat> um, but I had to start with operational excellence. And for many of you, you've seen this slide before. And I wanted to use it to kick us off because Julie and I both believe and operate excellently, <laughs> but we've been doing this for our, our entire careers and probably our entire lives. And we focus on these four elements in everything we do, people, process, strategy, and systems. And we don't just offer a solution of project management, right? It's going to include change management, communication, um, probably some soft skills on leadership training, right? And competencies on how we interact with people. Um, but again, it's a foundation of a company. And this training and this, this introduction into communications as a system is part of the foundation. So it's a system that you're going to hear more about. It affects people. It obviously includes a lot of process. And it's not only a strategy a company should employ, it's a strategy on how you should operate um, on a daily basis. And if you have questions about what operational excellence is, check out our June webinar on our YouTube page or reach out directly to us. So what is this? So I'm starting with characteristics of high-performing companies. One, they value their people, right? They drive communication and they manage communication as a problem process, a business process. And I, I also want to connect this back to my lean roots because lean is defined as continuous improvement and respect for every individual, right? We do this because we value our people. We, we want to help them and do better. We want to give them the right tools. <clears throat> and this, this quick quote at the bottom, it basically, for me, I understand it that communication isn't just a one-time thing right? It's how we operate. It's an attitude. It's really the culture of your company. It's embedded into that. And it's how we act. It's how we operate. It's how we do things. And so we want leaders who drive communication, right? That's clear. 
that's um, they help hold people accountable for results. Um, it's managed as a business process because it's it's more than just a collection of programs and activities. It's initiative. It's events, right? It's you're going to see more about rewards and um, policies and procedures and how that plays into communication within a business. And when done well, <laughs> there's so much on here, I know, you build confidence and trust, right? We engage people. We increase productivity. People know why they come to work. They understand what they're supposed to work on. Um, you become an employer of choice. People seek you out. They want to work for you, not just your company, but also you as an individual. They want to work for you in your department. They show up to work. It's a competitive advantage. And again, we do that because we value our people. And when we stop valuing our people and how they learn and what they need to know, they're not going to show up. And right now with this, you know, war on talent, that's only going to get worse. You need to figure out different ways, modify that equation of how you operate as a department or a business to make sure people are engaged and they're excited to show up and they believe in what you do every day. And through that, obviously communication is a system. And when businesses don't do this so well, and this is, a, this is from 2016, <clears throat> big companies, 100,000 employees lost an average of $62 million, right? Even if you divided that to 50,000 employees and, you know, in half and in half, that we're still in the millions, right? Wasted on inefficiencies. Um, and the, it's troubling for me because you see the consequences of poor communication, stress, right? Delay or failure to complete a project, right? Yeah, no, Julie, we've been a part of those. <laughs> I'm just we, like we looking have, at all these going check, 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 <laughs> check. I know, right? <laughs> um, it's fascinating. Low morale, right? Missed goals. Um, you know, loss of a client, you know, especially when you think about de depending on what function you might be, um, sales organizations, right? Big deal, whether you're a service or a product company, um, it's a big deal. And so we're going to give a couple. Um, thoughts on how to overcome this, but it's definitely, it's, it's a large initiative to take this on, but in everything that we do and all the businesses we work on, let's start small. We're not going to have to, you know, eat the whole elephant at once. <clears throat> it's also a reality check. <laughs> this is challenging, right? It does take time and some thoughtfulness and planning. We've got a few ideas for you, um, but again, start small, small initiatives, start small changes and you can start to improve communication as a system. So what is this? Um, as I mentioned, it's a system, it's a foundation for how you operate. It's how leaders operate. And whether we like it or not, this communication as a system controls how our words are heard, interpreted, and, and more. <clears throat> and so and this is why we want to take the time to understand what it is, understand the impact on people, and the value it can bring when done well. And so leaders starting to make up, you know, the largest part of this communication system is, and as Julie, I'll quote you, is you're a leader the second you open your mouth, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone might argue that you're also a leader when you show up and unfortunately don't show up, right? Or don't say something. You're also communicating that entire time, which is so painful. It Being is. A leader, I feel like you're being watched all the time. I this one yeah. cracks me up because when you're like, even when they're not, even when they're not saying anything, I once had somebody who sat outside my door, and if I closed my office door for too long, they thought that we were selling the company. And I'm like, literally, you got that from me shutting my door. Like, I just needed to have a quiet conversation and get my head going. It had nothing to do with that, but nonverbal communications, right? And the raincoat I wore last week. Why mm -hmm. was I still wearing the raincoat inside? Mm -hmm. As it was cute, duh. No, I, know, I liked it a lot. <laughs> there was a couple of reasons why I left it on. Um, the fact that it was like, you know, I don't know, 40 days of rain in two mm -hmm. days last week. Um, but, but as leaders, you know, simple things to think about. How you use your time. Is your door open or closed? What message is that sending? Is this frustrating? Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. And it's sometimes it's annoying, but it's reality. And you have to recognize that when, when you're in any role or you want to be perceived as a leader, you have to be aware how you listen, how you respond, how you reward employees. Is it consistent? Is it every once in a while? Is it never, right? Do you ever reward anyone or give recognition? 
Are you a leader people want to work for if you don't ever recognize your, your people? So huge, huge deal. And then infrastructure, right? So this can speak to org charts, um, measurements and rewards. Think about your performance review process at your company, right? Is it equal? I know companies I've been at, some of them were great. Everyone was trained, all the leaders understood how to do it. And if you went from one function to another, it, you got a similar, similar response, right? Detailed information, how to improve things to work on. People cared. Another company I went when I joined and I inherited the team and I did their performance review for the first time, the people that worked there for, I think, probably 15 years were like, no one has ever written this much information on us our entire time we've been here. And I'm like, that's, that's not cool, right? <laughs> and then did I, give them, did I give them the same numbers that the previous leaders gave them? No, because my scale was obviously different, but I certainly had a lot of feedback of why I was giving them these certain numbers. And obviously some of them became very scared, but we created plans to work on that. So it, it, was, it was better for my department, which was better for us, which is obviously better for the company. Um, you know, resource allocation. Julie, have you ever worked for a company where certain functions got a lot of people mm -hmm. and other functions did not? Yep. Right? <laughs> Many companies, <What>? actually. <laughs> I know. Are those departments more important? Nope. They just have a better communicator, better would, seller, <laughs> better seller, loudest complainer, who knows mm -hmm. what it is. And I, I, at a company I was at, I went from one very prominent division to HR mm -hmm. and I had a, a jacket that had the, you know, our logo on it. And they're like, where'd you get that? And I'm like, oh, I, I worked on a project. And they're like, we don't get anything over here. I'm like, can we get t-shirts? nope. Can we do this? Nope. Can we buy lunch every Friday? Nope. And I'm like, it was such a disparity between the functions. And it was unfortunate. And again, back to the leaders, they were very different communicators, different thought processes. And it said a lot. It made it seem like their function was not important. Mm -hmm. When in reality, what they were doing was hiring the people that were completing the work. Mm -hmm. um, work environment. You know, there's, there's so much here. We could probably go on. Something I want to call out, though, for leaders is that sometimes these elements don't seem fair, function to function. Life's not fair. Work's not always fair. But I found that when companies and leaders acknowledge when there is some sort of, you know, yes, I recognize that this is happening over there. Let's talk about it. Let's at least talk about it. Even if it's not going to be air afterwards, we're venting it. We're getting it out, um, you know. But I've also had people or, or leaders who are completely aloof to it right? You know, they didn't recognize the tension that was going on. They couldn't feel it. And they, mm -hmm. they thought everything was great. They probably got an amazing paycheck. Um, <laughs> got great bonuses while everyone below them was paid peanuts compared to other functions and other, you know, businesses the, that were performing the same role. And so to me, that says a few things is that that leader is not asking enough questions to understand what the current state is. Right, and I've, I've had um, one individual comes to mind. This person would ask the same two or three questions to people around the entire organization. And there he, he was always looking for a consistent answer. And when he didn't get a consistent answer, ding, 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 you know, the spidey sense went off. And he would continue to, to continue to ask around to figure out what it was so he could help fix it. And I thought that was great because sometimes the, the questions he would ask, you're like, really? It was awesome. He was staying attuned to everything that was going on, keeping his ear to the ground. And sometimes he heard things that weren't fun or exciting, mm -hmm. but he did it. And I, I definitely value that. Um, you know, we want people to support leaders to be successful coaches, right? Julie yourself, mm -hmm. helping leaders, you know, ask themselves challenging questions to figure out how to improve peers, right? Providing feedback um, and having honest conversations. All of this falls into infrastructure. Um, and then you've got formal channels, which are meetings, uh, monthly meetings, quarterly meetings, huddles, town halls, uh, printed or electronic publications, right? Videos, right? We work for a place that sent videos out once a quarter. You know what that did though? Consistent communication. Mm -hmm. It was expensive and it was time consuming, but you know what? There was consistent communication across the entire company, right? Across the whole US. So you know, looking back, I'm like, man, that was, that was smart. Right. And they were, they, they did it for a reason because they valued their people and they wanted to make sure the message was heard. 
And when we think about formal channels, here's a great time to plan, right? Here's a great time to help leaders communicate, right? If you're in a supportive or an administrative role, um, how can you give them collateral to share and be consistent? Um, I, I'll never forget my, my general manager when I was at Toyota did an amazing job, or I, I still remember this. He would come to one of our meetings um, once a month. We had weekly meetings as a team. And he always brought on the piece, some sort of piece of paper that he would read from. But it was coming down from the top and he was sharing that information. And when he came to our meeting, he was telling us what was important. He was helping us understand where we need to focus our energy. And every month it wasn't different. It was very consistent each time and deliberate. We knew when we left that meeting what we were going to work on. It was simple. It was consistent. consistent. We knew what we were working on. Was it hard what we were doing? Absolutely. But we knew where we were going right? There was no questions asked. Um, if you're sharing too much information, right? Too much going on. No one's going to pay attention. They will stop paying attention. Nothing happens. There's no trust, right? Why do I come to work? What's my value? Um, that's where we have to take advantage of those formal channels in different ways. It's amazing, Jen, what happens when communication doesn't feel like an afterthought. Like when you plan it out and you actually have a schedule and you know what you're doing, the whole preparation of that is absolutely felt by the people who are hearing that message. So I feel like if there's one thing that people take from my from my perspective from this is plan out your communications. Don't put yourself in a rush and be like, oh shoot, we should communicate that. Right. Get it on a schedule. I, I should repeat that next month. Yeah. Um, I like that. What happens when communication is not an afterthought? Yeah. That's, we need to like have a banner today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And, and when we're inconsistent, when it's an afterthought, right? When we're not thinking about it or planning, we create mixed messaging, right? When we're inconsistent, um, we create mixed messages. Um, when we change our minds and don't fully communicate or don't pay attention to our words, our actions or the communication system, we send mixed messages, right? And what happens, right? Employees misread situations or events. Have you ever left a meeting like, Mm, that didn't feel good. <laughs> what do they really mean by that? Mm -hmm. or, or like my favorite is when you have two people come out of two different meetings and they were getting the same message and they're like, what did you get? What did you hear? And then they try to piece it together themselves. <laughs> right, right. And I think something I've, I've realized in the last couple of years is that the successful companies that drive value, employees understand what's going on, make it simple, mm -hmm. right? They're not not having all of this stuff that you need to pay attention to. They keep it very simple, right? It's like, it's foundational. Look at what we learn in kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. We don't learn a ton of stuff. We learn basics so we can operate and perform. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about my kids learning about pennies and dimes right now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so employees misread situations or events. They leave meetings and, and don't have the same understanding. Um, sometimes messages are not received as they were intended which can send a lot of mistrust, frustration, right? Obviously then the rumor mill and gossip starts. Um, and if it's something important, we need to plan and we need to communicate it in a couple different ways. Mixed media, something on the wall, in a, in a meeting, cascaded down, in an email, right? You know how when we get new benefits every year, we get stuff in the mail a couple times, like those big postcards, right? You get some emails throughout, like, solid change management strategy that's communicating because it's important. We need people to sign up for these benefits. Clearly pre-planned. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, even I, right, send mixed messages more than I'd like. Hey kids, don't spoil your dinner. Oh, you're hungry, just have a snack. I don't wanna listen to you anymore. Mm -hmm. Now they're not gonna eat dinner because I let them have a snack. Um, you tell your kids to make their bed and you don't. So what's really important here? right? Um, I don't ask my kids to make their bed <laughs> because I can't back that up with a repeatable action. I will say I'm working on it very hard right now. Um, <laughs> so I can start doing it for myself and then I can start asking them to do it, but I'm not going to ask them to do something that I clearly won't do. Um, other mixed messages come with our, our actions and not just our words. You know, are there any plant leaders on the phone or watching this right now who are constantly preaching, hey, pick up that broken pallet, pick up that bottle that fell. Mm -hmm. But yet when you're on a tour or out on the plant floor, you step right over it, like you don't even notice it. 
I was actually way at one on Friday and I was kicking aside pallets with uh, nails that were poking up a hundred percent. And I think of this one too, Jen, like where we say you got to follow the process and then we watch a leader not follow a process. Yep. Yes, exactly. Oh, it's okay. I can just do it this one time. Yes. What are you saying? And that just, you know, people Mm -hmm. of course remember the bad or the the, the rumor is more than they do the real. Mm-hmm. Reinforce the real, reinforce the correct activity. Um, what about, Julie, this is going to ring true with you. <laughs> what about start times for meetings? Oh. 9 a.m., we start that meeting. You as a leader show up at 9.02. What are you saying to your employees? <laughs> or 9.05 with a coffee in your hand telling me that traffic was awful. Right, right. The drive through coffee. Not, not. <laughs> Even if you did your mobile order, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, gets me every time. It says you don't respect people's time, mm-hmm. right? And therefore, why should they respect yours or the businesses? So think about this. And then this is where, obviously, asking for input, you'll get more, more um, insight into maybe the mixed messages you're sending. It's hard mm-hmm. to, they're, it's until talking about it, I didn't realize probably how many I'm sending, especially in my home, or I, I did it previously, previous places that I've worked. Um, it's a lot. And you know, what's the root cause of all of them? And there's a lot. And I, I laugh in my notes. I just wrote, there's so many root causes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to figure out, while I'm talking, Julie, pick your favorite. I was trying to figure out which one sticks out to me the most. Um, and honestly, I, I'm going to pick up the, the one I always look at first is assuming people get it. Mm-hmm. We assume people get it. So why would I have to communicate again? Never assume. Communicate again. Yeah. When you think people get it, say it again. Oh Show it again. Do it again. I think my favorite here is the desire to or moving too fast because it relates so much to change management in the ad car. And mm-hmm. a lot of the times we as leaders have had a lot of time to deal with the communication or the change, or we're putting it together based on how we would understand it, that mm-hmm. it makes perfect sense to us, but we don't take the time to put it in somebody else's shoes to really understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, and Absolutely. if you want more tips on that, go back to the change communications webinar <laughs> from March this year, or May, Eight. sorry, May. May. Uh, yep. Exactly, because that desire piece is, is really tricky because you can communicate the best message but if it doesn't mean anything to the people that it's going to, as Joey Triviani mm-hmm. says, it's a moot point. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, and uh, lack of alignment, no training or onboarding, no consistent mm-hmm. communication at all. It's it's ongoing. So what's the root cause? Let's fix that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so what to do now, right? What will you do? And so here's my challenge to everyone is one, try and identify everyday mixed messages. If you need to start at home, do that, right? Back to the, don't spoil your dinner. Oh, you need a snack, okay. Or um, I, I'm working very hard to keep our house picked up in certain ways and I can really only focus on the kitchen. And I'm trying to use that as an example. Um, but sometimes I let that slide because I just, I don't wanna do it, but I need to. Remember, this is work. <laughs> this takes planning and time. Back to that reality, you know, reality bite slide that I had earlier on. And, and then brainstorm the root cause. So again, think about this and why, why do we have this mixed messages? Where is it coming from? Um, and then do something. And I think the biggest thing for leaders is that when you see a mixed message at your company or you're re- the recipient of it, do something. Ask a question, ask another leader. Why is it like that? Some things we can't solve immediately. It, it is what it is, but at least try and find out or let those people know that their message is not being sent in, a, in an amazing way and it's being heard in different ways. Um, you know, our, our, what we hate the most are launch and leaves, right? We, we do trainings for companies and we, we plant seeds that things need to happen after the training to reinforce it following, you know, ADCAR and, and change management. Oh no, they get it. We're done. They got this. No, they don't. (laughs) Right. We just spent all of this money. It's a lunch and leave. Check the box. We don't want to do that at all. So challenge yourself. Identify some mixed messages in your life that you are the recipient or you might be um, supporting. Um, Identify the root cause and then do something about it. Um, Even if it's small tweaks, changes, or just identifying it from the beginning and raising your hand is a great place to start. One of the biggest ones on this, Jen, that I will always tell Mm -hmm. people 
um, because I had leaders do this one time, well, many, many times in meetings, is having their phone or their laptops open during meeting or training. If you want your team to be paying attention, then you need to put your stuff mm -hmm. away too. Just because you're the leader in there doesn't mean you get to, because if right. you're doing it, everybody else thinks it's okay as well. Yep, absolutely. More messages, right? Mm -hmm. Back to your nonverbal communication. Yes. And this works with dogs too, as I heard mine barking. So yeah. <laughs> consistent <laughs> and not having mixed messages between mm -hmm. me and their, their doggy daddy. So, yep, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, are you ready to take action? Are you ready to do something? Are you thinking about some mixed messages that are happening in your company or, or worse, the t titles, right? The titles that you have or pay grades just don't make any sense. That all sends mixed messages. So if you need help doing something, obviously finding the root cause, unsure where to start, or you found it, now you need to do something about it, obviously call us. We're happy to have a phone call to, to explore and figure out how that foundation of operational excellence can come in and support and implement different solutions that are, are going to help you get over that hump and make communication much easier, more intentional. Um, obviously, as mentioned earlier, we can perform remote training or facilitation to help with these elements. Um, and we're just happy also to come in and do an assessment, right? And figure out where things are working and where things aren't and work with you to identify root cause and the implemented or, or solutions to implement. And what's coming up in October, Julie. I'm so excited for this one. I've been waiting for this one to come up. Um, and this is our webinar on decisions made easy. So if you are one of those people who gets stuck in paralysis by analysis, or uh, you have the dreaded, what do you want for dinner? What do you want for dinner? Or maybe you're in the middle of trying to pick a new vendor or some new software at work, or I actually know somebody who's on the webinar right now who might have used this to pick a new house that they were moving into. That is where you can use Kano and Pew Concept Selection. So anytime you're looking at trying to make decisions and you want to take the subjectivity out of it, take the emotion out of it, this will help you determine what criteria you want to use to be able to help make that decision, determine what's the right choice for you, and to really look at it from a numbers and data perspective to help guide you down that path uh, so you don't experience uh, instant regret or buyer's remorse when you're done with that decision. So this is one of those tools in your personal life, professional life, you can use this one all over the place. I love this one. We'll be walking through a practical example um, and we'll have some templates coming from this one as well. So Thursday, October 14th from 3 to 3.45 Eastern. It's going to be a little bit longer because this one is so much fun. Um, but head to our website if you want to register for that one. Actually, I might throw it into chat as we have you guys as well. Um, and then I'll put it in the YouTube video for us too. Awesome. Well, thank you, Julie. Um, this was exciting. I, I, I was fun to put together. It's fun to work with this other company on this. I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, this is obviously a part of a much larger training program, um, but it's such a big deal. And I'm glad they're taking the time to focus on something that is often overlooked and not intentional. It is huge. It is huge. I'm going to be um, super conscious all week of what messages it is that I am sending. I <laughs> to other people because I feel like this is one of those that we don't even realize. In fact, I got feedback from a group that I was working with a couple of weeks ago that immediately when they walk in to go talk to their boss, they feel as if they're being shut down and not listened to or assumed that they did something wrong because the leader immediately pushes back from the desk and leans back and crosses their arms like this. And he thinks he's doing it because he's like, I'm opening them up and I want them to see that I'm relaxed in this situation. But everybody walking into it is like, oh my God, he thinks I did something wrong. So you have to be super careful about this. So it was one of those little pieces of feedback of, hey, lean into the conversation, go have a walk right. in a neutral area while you're talking about this stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff that you can overcome once you recognize it and just being mm -hmm. self-aware of it is like that first component of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So ask for honest feedback, have a, have an anonymous survey of your team, mm -hmm. right? Where you might be sending or your business um, might be sending mixed messages without even knowing it. Um, exactly. No matter what it, it takes time and it's work to overcome, but you will create an atmosphere to drive engagement where people are excited to be there. They will work hard. And that <laughs> is what we want all businesses to have because it helps the bottom line. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jen. Super informative so, today. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. You got it. We'll see you guys in October.
Bye, everyone. Thanks for Bye. joining us today.